Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to do grep styling and hopefully I can do it in about 7 minutes because at 8.30 sharp the ducks start. So let's get cracking. I'm going to show you how to convert these endnote markers into superscripts and we're going to do it using the grep find and change. We're going to pick the endnote markers because they're fairly complex relative to most grep commands. And I also, in prepping for this video, discovered there might be a bug with InDesign 15. So I'll show you what to do if that's the case. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is pull up the Find and Change dialog box by hitting Command F. And I already have the grep command for that in here. I'll show you, though, what it is that are arrived at. So we'll start with just this. And this means any digit. And this is obviously problematic because it is going to pick every single digit in your text when this is the one I want. So I want every digit. And in looking at these, they're styled a little differently and I can take advantage of that. So I'm going to click on Find Format. So I'm going to look for any digit that is also underlined. And then additionally, I'm going to look for any digit that is also in this word R17 blue that came in with the word styling. Click OK. Now we're getting somewhere. Now it only selects the endnote markers and bypasses any of the regular dates. So we're getting closer. However, this becomes a little problematic when you get to not even double digits per se, but well, double digits in that it selects individually as opposed to both, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, but the other thing it bypassed, we'll go back Because if you notice here, and it might be a little difficult, but in between 5 and 6, there's a comma. And I'd like to grab that one as well. And so what I'm going to do is say plus, which means any single digit or more, so double digits, triple digits, whatever, with a comma. And in this case, it's only going to find endnotes with the comma attached. So if we go forward, find next. You can see it will only grab digits that have that comma following it. And we want it to do both. We want it to do it when it has it and when it doesn't. And so we will add a question mark and that makes it conditional. Now, you can see it grabs all those. Now it bypassed some of the daggers and things, but we can come back and clean that up with a uh, text change. And see right there it grabbed double digits with a comma, double digits without. So we're on the right track. Now we got to figure out how we want to style it. And I already created a superscript style. Uh, but let me back out of here and I'll show you what that looks like. So if I double click on this, we can open it. Basically, I told it it's based on nothing, which is great. And that under position, I want open type superior or superscript. And that will only convert into a superscript if the typeface I've selected has that as an open type option. So we're here. And this is where the error is. Typically, what I would do is highlight all this text and go all the way to the list style because I don't want it to be affecting anything in the list itself. That's a totally different style, but some of the uh, entries in here would fall under this descriptor. And tip, oh, interesting. So this was gone. It may be gone on yours. If that's the case, you're gonna have to do it manually. If you have all these selections, and just to be clear, previously, I only had all documents and document available, none of this. If you do have selection, click selection and then change all. And it'll change all of them within 
this selection. And you can see nothing really happened. Some of that is because localized formatting is uh, overwriting the way it looks, and part of that is because Arial doesn't have a true open type superscript. But you can see that when I highlight it, it's as a superscript character style. So when I do ultimately substitute it for a paragraph style, it will make the switch. So if for some reason that selection isn't available, what you're going to have to do is place your cursor at the top. This is a little more tedious, but you can definitely brute force it if you need to. And that would be to go find next, change, find next, change, find next, change, until you get to here. And then you would simply click done, bypass this area, and then put your cursor in part two and repeat it for parts two and three that you have in your story. You can use that grep to also look for digits in your, um, or small caps for instance, uh, if you want to convert from say uh, all caps to small caps for LCD or USA, those sort of things, or for digits if you want to change the case from lining to old style. That's typically when you'd use a grep. It looks like it's time for the ducks, so I'll end it there. Hope that helps.